So look, it's December, the whiskey are running, and if you can be quick, and if you saved up enough lunch money over the year, and if you have just the right amount of luck, you can get some pretty amazing bottles this time of year. This, we did. So today, we are doing our last, our most expensive, and our most epic haul of the year for December with 17 bottles, uh, running us a cheek chapping $3,826.56. But to be fair, in my defense, we got some pretty amazing whiskeys uh, to bring in the New Year's with our friends, with our families, and hopefully you all do too. Now, if you like the hauls, if you like the wanders, the unbottlings, the unboxings, the reviews, and pretty much all the great stuff we got cooking up for you, and we have tons of good stuff cooking up for you, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps out our channel. It is good for your whiskey mojo. And you know what? You get updates when our newest videos come out every Sunday and sometimes in between. All right, now, let's get down to this most epic December. All right, so let's do a real quick whiskey check. Uh, and as seeing as though it is the end of the year, uh, you know, it is time to enjoy some of the nicer things in life, especially <laughs> after a year like that. Uh, so today, I'm going to be enjoying, you know what, let's do something a little nice here. I'm gonna be enjoying this Knob Creek 15. Because, yeah, I'm just feeling a little, I'm feeling extravagant today. Get a little of this, get a pop. Ah, <laughs> pretty good. A little juice. And to whiskey. Because, really, frankly, you can never drink too much of it. You can just really only drink it too fast. Cheers. All right, so admittedly, <laughs> things for December, well, they, they definitely really got kind of out of control. <laughs> You know, when it comes to this time of year, there are uh, some of these really hard to find whiskeys that are now just momentarily for this one brief window in the year, widely available. And uh, sometimes when you see that bourbon uh, that you've been waiting for all year, you just gotta jump at it. All right, so now for the first up for the haul is gonna be this Midwinter's Night Tram. Um, you know, obviously named after Midwinter's Night Stream, the Shakespeare play. It is a highly, highly allocated whiskey that once it hits the shelf, it basically disappears right away. So we were real lucky to be able to get this one. It is out of the Utah-based distillery High West. And basically, essentially, it is a finished version of High West's flagship whiskey, which is Rendezvous Rye. So it's finished in sherry and ruby port casks. Um, to give it this very, like, obviously you can see a really beautiful, beautiful color, like a mahogany color. And uh, the rye is quite delicious as well. Um, this one we got at a local whiskey shop here in Los Angeles for $139.99. And it has an ABV of 49.3%. So a little bit low, um, but, you know, it's uh, it's still pretty good. And if you want to see the full review of this one, uh, I'll put a link up uh, for the full review of this one as well. All right, so next up on this list is a scotch out of the famed whiskey house, the McAllen's, which is this McAllen's Rare Cask. It is just the normal 12-year-old McAllen whiskey, but they finish it in their finest sherry casks that are in the McAllen warehouse. And uh, if you look at that presentation, that is some nice presentation, by the way. Just you get like a nice sunburst right around the whiskey and the bottle itself looks real nice. But it was finished in the finest sherry casks uh, that are in the McAllen warehouse. But strangely enough, <laughs> it was developed with the help of the world-class violinist Nicola Bernardetti. Uh, and uh, I'm not really sure why they had a violinist come in to help them choose their whiskey, but they did and that's what they are sticking to. Uh, this one we got it for uh, $339.99. Um, and it has an ABV that's only at 43%. So it's a little bit low, but you know, you're always going to pay a premium for the McAllen's. Also, we reviewed this one uh, earlier this month as well. So I'll put a link up if you want to see the full review of the McAllen Rare Casks. All right. So the number three for this haul for December is one that the wife uh, has had really a devil of a time tracking down. Uh, she's been hunting this one down really <laughs> kind of the whole year. Um, and it finally came up and she pounced on it, which is this Blood Oath Pact 8, which is a blend of bourbons that are 14, 11, and 8 years old rye bourbons that are finished in Calvados cask. Um, so it's kind of obvious why this one's so hard to get, because it really sounds 
delicious. Um, she got this one at a local liquor purveyor here in Los Angeles uh, for $149.99. And it has an ABV of 49.3% as well. And we, uh, although I have not had a chance to try it yet, I really look forward to reviewing it um, because uh, I, there's tons of great stuff online about it. And people are super excited about it. So I think this one's going to be really amazing and the blend sounds great. So I'm excited to have this one as part of our uh, collection as well. And uh, like I said, we'll do a review here in the not so distant future. Now, these next two bottles, I guess at the number four spot, are whiskeys that were so frustratingly uh not <laughs> present in southern california because uh, we saw them pop up everywhere in the country basically all over the country and then they showed up in northern california and then finally they circled the drain here in socal which is this gold spot irish whiskey uh we got both of these ones so we bought two bottles of them because i think they're going to be pretty good and i think there's something i'm going to want to hold on to for a while um, but we got both of these at the Total Wine Grand Opening. Uh, you can check that one out. We did a Whiskey Wanders at that Total Wine Grand Opening. Um, and they are from the Spot families of whiskey. So they're Irish whiskeys. Um, but specifically, these ones are special editions meant to celebrate the 135th anniversary of Mitchells & Son. That's the distillers um, being in business. So I'm real excited to have both of these in our collection because um, they are nine years old, which I think will be a very interesting and good reference point because the blue spot is at seven years old and the yellow spot is at 12 and the green spot's at 10. So having a nine-year-old one will be very interesting to see how that whiskey changes over those years. So uh, real excited about these ones. We got them each for $99.99 and they have an ABV that is a very healthy 51.4%. All right, so here we go for the number five bottle on this haul. Um, it's one that I was actually intending to buy as a gift for my in-laws. Um, but then I noticed uh, one really interesting thing. Oh, by the way, it's Blanton's. Uh, so I noticed one very interesting thing. Uh, first is that uh, this uh, specific bottle of Blanton's, it comes from barrel, uh, let's see here, barrel 253, which is not interesting. Uh, it comes from Rick number 56, which is also not really interesting. And it is dumped on 12-23-2021. Also not interesting. But the one interesting thing on it, the thing that has <laughs> swayed me uh, from possibly giving it as a gift, is the fact that it is bottle number one out of that barrel. <laughs> so, you know, I I'm not saying I'm a superstitious native, but, uh, you know, I think I'm going to end up keeping this one because it is number one. So, yeah, uh, in-laws are going to have to find, we're going to have to figure something else out for them. Now, we picked this one up at the grocery store uh, down in San Diego, where we got it for $79.99, which is kind of, uh, a, kind of a high amount. If you kind of look at, we got it earlier, I think, this year at Costco for $46.99. So, you know, uh, $79.99 is considerably higher than that. But again, you know, it's the holidays and that's how things go. So, uh, super excited to have this one. And I don't think I'll ever open it because it's uh, number one, right? So... <laughs> I don't know, I just, uh, something about it. Okay, so for the number six whiskey for the haul is one that the wife was super duper excited to get. Um, since she is a fan of most of the whiskeys out of Campbelltown, so whether it's Springbank or Hazelburn, uh, but these ones specifically, the Long Roan Red 15, um, she was real excited. And again, this is another one that we got at the Total Wine Grand Opening, so you know, if you are a scotch drinker, they tend to have pretty good whiskeys at that uh, total wine. The bourbon, not so much, but the, um, you know, those grand openings, they got it there. Um, so again, Long Road 15, uh, they are the red version, uh, and they are quite hard to get, uh, either here or in Europe. Now, these red ones specifically are the more rare of the bunch because they are, as it says here, peated. In fact, they are heavily peated whiskeys um, that you don't usually typically get when you try the normal long-grown whiskeys or really most of the Campbelltown whiskeys. Um, so we got each of these for $149.99 and the ABV on them is again a very respectable, not that 43% that you get with McCallum's or 40% with some like Johnny Walker Blue, um, but they are very respectable 51.4%. And that is an ABV that I like to see. These are yet another set that we are real excited to have and we're going to do a review on and I'm excited to try uh, at some point here in the near future. So that is the Long Grown 15 Red. Now for this next bottle, it is the one that I am most excited about pretty much for the whole bunch because I am a growing Knob Creek fanboy. Um, but this one is rare. It is elusive and it has eluded us uh, really for the last couple of months, which is this Knob Creek 
18. Look at that. Ooh, fancy, huh? Um, it is pretty much the oldest rendition of Knob Creek that's available out there, at least that I know about. There's probably other ones that are special releases, but um, I was real excited to get this one, uh, and I am literally dying to open it up, but I want to run through um, a lot of the other ages of Knob Creek that we have. So uh, whether it is the 15 uh, that I'm trying right now, or the 12 if we can get that, uh, the nine and some of the other ones before we get there because I want to get the full Knob Creek 18 experience. But, uh, you know, this is <laughs> it's real nice looking. I like that. And uh, you can definitely see even the age there in the whiskey. It just got a beautiful color to it. Um, this one is released uh, number KC001 from distillery DSP KY-230, which no surprise, looked it up on the internet, uh, is Jim Beam. Um, this one we got here in LA and we bought it for $199.99 at a grocery store. Uh, and again, I'm ecstatic to have it in the collection. Um, and I think that it'll be, you know, it'll be the crown of uh, our Knob Creek selection. So if someone comes over and they love Knob Creek, I'll be like, ooh, look at it. Don't touch, but look at it. <laughs> All right, so moving right along here as I'm getting pushed out <laughs> by the bourbons. Uh, this next one is really, whether it is a holiday or whether it is not a holiday, uh, I think that the wife and I always just kind of opt to pick it up anyways um, because it's just kind of our general reflex for it. Uh, it. You know, for the last couple of years, it had been so scarce. Now it's showing up more, but I still get that gut reflex to pick them up, which is this Hakushu 12. Um, it is one of the few, quote unquote, true Japanese whiskeys that we see here in the U.S., at least at a reasonable price. Um, we got this one at Costco, like we get most of these ones uh, from at uh, Costco for $99.00. And 99 cents, which is quite good as far as price goes, just because uh, there is some severe gouging when it comes to Jap Bourbonese, bourbon whiskey anyways, but Japanese whiskey uh, specifically, <laughs> especially with an age statement. Um, so, you know, we have a couple of these, but I'm just, it's nice to have another one around. And you know what? This might actually make a, a pretty good gift for the in-laws. I should just give them this one instead of the plantains. Hmm. Uh, the other thing is that it's a nice counterbalance uh, to the sweeter kind of cousin, the Yamazaki 12, that are often sold side by side. It's more kind of salty and brooding. So I really like this one uh, as well. My wife likes the Yamazaki 12 better, but, you know, <laughs> this one's pretty good too. So that is the uh, Hakushu 12. Now this next one is a bottle that the wife uh, was quick enough on the draw to get online. And, you know, I see it here and there. It's sort of complicated to figure out which one is which, but I'm excited that we got this one. Uh, for the bottle number nine is this Old Carter Kentucky Straight Whiskey. Um, because, you know, we got it online. We had to get it online because it is ridiculously hard to get. Um, and it's even rare to see in real life and even more so at a reasonable price. So uh, even online, we saw it was okay when we just kind of had to splurge and pay the reseller price on it. Um, but, it, you know, it's probably one of the highest ABVs that we have in the collection at 65.5% ABV. <laughs> so that is, uh, that is, I mean, here in California, I think you got to register as a lethal weapon or at least sign a waiver or something. <laughs> um, it's bottle 446 out of 1,692. It is from batch number two. It is small batch and it is barrel strength, as you would imagine with an ABV like that. Uh, we got this one specifically for $199.99. And again, from the reviews that we've seen on this one, and there are many different varieties and versions of them, but for this one specifically, it seems that uh, hopefully it's going to be worth every single penny we spent on it. So that is the old Carter batch number two. All right, so moving along swiftly here. Um, and this next one up is one that really doesn't require a lot of introduction. For anyone who drinks anything that has whiskey in it or anything that drinks any whiskey at all um, because it is probably the most well-known of all the prestige whiskeys i mean frankly in the world wherever you are whether it's the u.s whether it's asia uh, which is this johnny walker blue and i think i mean for me it was the first whiskey first like high-end whiskey that i've ever tried um this one is actually going to end up being a gift for somebody else, uh, but uh, I figured I'd include it in there because we picked it up uh, at co at Costco. Um, we picked it up for $179.99, uh, and the ABV on it is a very, very lackluster 40%, so um, it's going to be real, real watery. But again, you know what? It's it, it was meant to be a 
gift. And although it has as much horsepower as those three cylinder Geo Metros from back in the day, um, they look great in the box. People really feel fancy when you get it for them. So we picked this up for uh, one of our business associates. So that is the Johnny Walker Blue. All right, so the number 11 bottle on this list is yet another bottle that we picked up at the Total Wine grand opening. It was a good grand opening, um, which is, uh, you know, despite being essentially a money grab. I know it's a money grab. Everyone says it's a money grab. It is most definitely a money grab, but I did fall in the nostalgia for it for the great Frank Sinatra is this Sinatra Select Jack Daniels, which is supposed to be kind of a higher end Jack Daniels, maybe like a gentleman Jack that uh, has been stored in what they call Sinatra barrels, <laughs> which I think they made up, um, but they're basically just normal barrels that Jack Daniels would be in, but they put striations in it so that allegedly the whiskey gets uh, more exposure to the wood and gets a smoother, uh, you know, better taste to it. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure how uh, accurate that is or how true it could even possibly be. Um, but I do know that Frank Sinatra loved his Jack Daniels. So, you know, <laughs> I'm not afraid to be a part of that as well. Uh, we got this one for $119.99. It does have a slightly higher ABV than the normal Jack Daniels at 40%. So this one's at 45%. Um, and uh, I will eventually try this one. I mean, I bought it because of the Sinatra-ness of it um, more than anything else. And, uh, you know, I guess um, it would be kind of a good gift as well. Hey, does your dad like Frank Sinatra? All right, now as we round the bend on these last couple of bottles, uh, and this one, <laughs> I know I'm going to lot a lot of flack on, um, but I bought two of them, which is this Shibui 30, uh, which... You know, uh, we got it from Costco for $799.99, which, yes, is a lot. But I think these are going to be the oldest whiskey that we have in the collection now. Um, and honestly, you know what? <laughs> I know there's kind of a rather dubiousness about whether they are Japanese or not. And uh, I guess we could probably have uh, a discussion about that. But uh, the long and the short of it is I really like them. I like the... Uh, Shibui 18, which I have drinking a good amount of. In fact, I think I'm almost almost down to the very bottom of it. And uh, I enjoy the flavor of it. I like the, uh, like, it's got a kind of an interesting mushroomy flavor to it. So I like it, right? So I figured, you know what? 30 came up. It uh, doesn't show up that often. So I decided to pick one up. Now, uh, one interesting thing about the Shibui 30 is the fact that um, it is not made with like barley or corn or anything like that or wheat uh, but rather it is made with rice uh, so they make it with long grain rice as well as using some sort of like black koji which i think is like a, a mold of some sort that they use during the distillation process to create i guess the kind of unique flavors that come from a rice whiskey now sure it may not exactly be considered whiskey in every part of the world but here in the u.s and in japan uh, according to their rules, it still counts as whiskey, and they stand by it. And you know what? I stand by it, because I like it, just purely on taste. So I bought two of these. Uh, this is the Shibui 30. All right, so this next whiskey is kind of a low-key awesome Japanese whiskey. And from what I can gather, and what I've seen, uh, there's a lot of excitement in the Japanese whiskey's community forum for it, which is this Ichiro Blue World Whiskey. Now, it is a world whiskey because though although it is distilled uh, by Chichubu uh, in their distillery, um, it is actually a mixture of whiskeys from around the world, including Japanese, Scotch, Canadian rye, American bourbon, as well as Irish whiskeys as well. Um, it is blended by the world-renowned founder of the distillery, Ichiro, as his name is here on the front, uh, Akuto, who, you know, I imagine he, you know, is like Kwai Chang Kang, wandering the earth in search of peace, solving mysteries, and making some great whiskey in the process. <laughs> so anyways, uh, we got this one at uh, a local kind of corner store, liquor store here in LA. They just kind of had it sitting there. It was $189.99. And the nice thing about it is that it has an ABV that is typically higher than a lot of the Japanese whiskeys that we see at uh, 48%. So um, that is a, a good ABV that I, I really like to see. Now last, but not least, is a gift uh, from one of our business partners. So I don't know how much it costs, uh, although I do really appreciate it. Um, and I don't want to know what the price is. So I'm not going to look it up. I'm not going to look at any specifics on it. But it was a gift. 
Um, and it is this box set of Heaven's Doors whiskey. And uh, the true joy about getting a box set like this is one, uh, I have never tried any of the Heaven's Doors whiskey, although I have uh, seen it before and thought about trying it. Um, the next is that uh, because I didn't choose it and I haven't done any research on it, I can just have the pure joy of opening it up, trying them out, and uh, just seeing if I like them. I can turn off the whiskey analytics and just kind of enjoy them for what they are. So, again, thanks a bunch. Uh, you know who you are for our business associate who gave them. I really appreciate it. And that is going to be the last set of bottles in our December Epic Whiskey Haul. All right, so that's it as our last haul of the year for December. And like I said, <laughs> 17 bottles uh, comes out to a whopping $3,826.56 which is a lot yes it is a lot but you know this year it's been kind of a crazy ride for uh for the channel and for us and really for the world i guess um and we finally hit a thousand subscribers so again thank you to all you folks out there who subscribed and watch uh it's super amazing to have you up on board and a part of our whiskey journey uh so again thank you again and remember you know what if you do see a whiskey you love <laughs> Especially from a guy who bought uh, probably more whiskey than he should. Just buy it. Because if you don't, somebody else surely will. And it might actually be me. <laughs> Alright, so thanks again. Everybody have a Merry Christmas. Have a Happy Holidays. And you know what? Have a Happy New Year. We're close enough to say Happy New Year's. I'm out. And adios.